today on Driving Cleveland, I'm going to pick up one of the most famous and recognizable voices in Cleveland radio. You can hear him weekday mornings on 100.7 WMMS or just log on to Rover Radio and watch and listen. Um, so Rover is going to take a little break from his busy work schedule over at iHeartRadio to come into the car. And I have to be honest with you, I've, I've known him for a long time. We've been friends for a long time, and he's someone who I professionally and personally really respect, but I'm nervous to talk to him. I, I don't really know what to expect, and I obviously want it to go well. Um, so we're going to pull in, have him hop in the rolls, and see where it goes. Do you have any gray poupon? No, but I do have an umbrella in the door. <laughs> right up front. Oh my god. I know, right? Just in case it rains on our parade. Send people <laughs> off with that thing? Wow. And so all you have to do then is you just press a button right up top and it'll close the door for you. Welcome to the Rolls Royce. Ooh, that's fancy. Things worked out well after that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, really. You get fired and you drive a Rolls. I love it. Not so bad, right? I was listening to you today. You're taking the show on the road, maybe? Well, it's that's one of the things that we're... Uh, it's in the works. I don't know if it's going to happen for sure. I'm about 80% sure. So uh, we're on radio stations in various cities that I've never even been to the city. I've never even talked to the program director of the radio station. Um, so we want to have a bus, a full tour bus that we outfit with radio and television studio inside. And we can take it anywhere and broadcast, you know, we're completely self-contained. Uh, so we can go to cities that carry the show or anywhere else, really. We could go uh, if there's a big festival or event in Chicago or Las Vegas or LA, you name it, we can we can go there. Do you feel like you always have to be thinking about what the next cool thing is going to be? Like you've gone to a point where the show is just super and hugely successful. And so, do you have to always be coming up with something new? Well, yeah, really because I always want to push the envelope and do something bigger, and and uh, we've been I've been here in Cleveland for 13 years, and I love it here. But there's a certain cap that you can get to, uh, you know. So uh, I don't think that we can really grow the show anymore in Cleveland. You're 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 sort of plateaued. Um, I don't really have an interest in in leaving. So what we're trying to do is come up with something where. We basically have a show that is everywhere, essentially. For you, what do you define as success? When I first got into radio, I, I made, uh, I probably made $12,000 a year. <laughs> those those I, days, right? Oh my right? God. Well, poverty just, level money. Well, it's weird because you're so happy during those days too, though. You're just <laughs> so happy to be doing it. And then I, I remember... Uh, my buddy was doing afternoons and he was making $35,000 a year. And I'm like, Oh man, if I could just get that. Mm -hmm. Then I got a night job and I was making 35,000 and I heard the guy at the other radio station, he's making $50,000 a year. I'm like, Oh my God, if I could <laughs> just make $50,000 a year, I'd be driving a Rolls Royce. like Andrew <laughs> Ubecchio. Um, but you know, I don't think I'd ever be satisfied if we were as big as, the biggest radio show, Howard Stern. Uh, you know, you look at a guy like Ryan Seacrest who has mm -hmm. huge success in radio now. Um, but even if I had all of that, I don't think I would really be satisfied with with that. I just always want to be uh, bigger. Maybe you know, I had no father when I was a kid, so maybe it's mental. I had, I'm seeking approval from everyone, I suppose. Well, do you? When you say, like, oh, my God, if I could just make $50,000, did you ever really think that it was doable to be where you are now? Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> everyone said, since eight years old, I wanted to be on the radio, and everyone said, what are you, an idiot? You're never going to make any money. And right. I, I, you know, so 
no, I didn't, I didn't think that any of this was possible. And, and, uh, when I moved to Cleveland 13 years ago, I had been fired from every other radio job that I had. So some of them I'd only have for three months. So, uh, to, to imagine that we would have as much success as, as we have, um, no, I, I didn't really think it was possible. I just always loved doing it. If I was making, don't tell this to iHeart who pays me, but if I if I was making, if I was making that twelve thousand dollars a year, I, I would still, still want to do, do this. Yeah, I love it. Now, when you came to Cleveland, was that the first time that you did the format that you're doing now? Were you the guy who was just like spinning tunes and saying what the weather and the traffic were in between breaks? Or were you doing more of the, like, what do they call it? Do they still say it's shock jock? Is that what you say still? Yeah, you know, I, I guess that's the label that some shows like mine have. I, I, I don't know as if it's really deserved. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, when I started, I was just, yeah, I was just playing music. And the first radio station that I worked at, uh, I remember the program director yelling at me uh, because I would I would talk for too long, and he would say, "Shut up! Just play the music. No one wants to hear what you have to say." And uh, but I would look at these other guys and these other shows and all the people that were successful. It wasn't just anyone could play music. You hit a button, you play a song, big deal. Uh, the people who were very successful were people that were giving an opinion, people that were uh, saying what was on their mind, um, and so. I finally ended up getting a job, and before I came to Cleveland, I, I, I worked at a couple places, all playing music, and then I got a job for a company that was doing stuff at, at AM stations, and it was all talk, and they did it online as well, the place called Comedy World. They went bankrupt after like six months, surprise, surprise, but this is probably like in uh, 2000 or 2001, and uh, that was the first time I did all talk, and my buddy and I, we would listen to people like Howard Stern and shows like that and you go I can do this it's just talking with your friends like I, yeah. we do this when we go out to a bar we're drinking beer anyone could do this and so we move out there and uh, to LA and we do the show and on the probably the third day on a Wednesday I just ran out of stuff to talk about I'm like I've told <laughs> all my good life stories <laughs> In yeah. two and a half days. Now what the hell do yeah. we talk about? Not so easy, right? No, I, <laughs> way harder than I thought. It, yeah. You know, that's I guess that's a key. Like even if you're a, a stand-up comic, you know, everyone looks at that. You go, oh, I could do that. I could be funny. I could get up there and do that. But th that's only because they make it look so easy. Or actors, you know, they make it look so easy. Uh, I had no idea everything that was involved in doing a full-time talk show. So it was. Uh, that was the first time I did it, and then uh, coming to Cleveland, yeah, that was really the first uh, morning show uh, that I ever had. Well, because you're really good at it. Honestly, like even, I love doing interviews, and I've done them for a really long time and interviewed some of the most famous people on the planet. But I was actually a little nervous as I was getting ready for this one, because I'm like, you know, I listen to your show a lot. I think you're a great interviewer. I mean, you kind of, it's interesting because you can do a really smart interview with a politician, push it a little bit, but still be respectful. And then in the same show, you've got two guys on the show who are throwing cactuses at their <laughs> private parts, you know, <laughs> like somehow you found a way to be able to do polar opposites within the same show. I mean, I don't know how you talk the guys into doing some of the stuff that you talk them into. It's all guy stuff. <laughs> like, you know, you're a woman. You don't understand. Yeah. Like, guys just like to one-up each other and be stupid. I met your... Do you say fiancé or girlfriend? Because I, I hate feel like that fiance, word. I don't fiance like is the worst word ever. It's it like... Is. It, it sounds just, so stuffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so I would actually prefer to call her my girlfriend, but then it's like, that's weird because people are like, well, you're engaged, you know? So... What does she want you to call her? Just by her name? Uh, like, does she like to say, this is my fiancé? And does she say, this is my fiancé, Rover, or my fiancé, and call you by your birth given name? Well, see, this assumes that we go out and actually have some sort of social life. Um, this is probably the most I've talked to any other human being outside the show in the past six months, you know, besides her. Um, you know, she... Uh, 
uh, yeah, that's actually kind of a weird thing because my real name is Shane, and and uh, so when you meet people, you're not sure like whether you should be Shane or Rover. And I've actually had discussions with her. Uh, if it's around fans, it's Rover. But if it's around like a uh, or family or something, then it, then it's Shane. Yeah, like her parents call you Shane, not yeah, Rover. Yeah. Do her parents listen to the show? They do. Um, I I think that sometimes they can probably you know they, they, that can't be a fun thing to hear about your daughter and her sex life. And, but when you have a radio show, um, <laughs> you have to pretty much put everything on the table. And her and I, I I forgot what it even was, but she was upset one time. This is probably about a year and a half ago. She was upset over something that was discussed on the radio, and I basically. Uh, I mean, it might sound kind of cold, I guess. And I, I tried to take her feelings into account, but I said, look, this isn't going to change. It's not like I'm going to stop doing a radio show. Uh, this is what pays the bills. Um, so it's kind of take it or leave it, yeah, really. Yeah, this is what comes with the territory. Right. Um, I would imagine over time, has she become more understanding over time? Because I don't, I can't picture you ever deciding you're going to spend your life with a girl who's less than really cool and pretty chill because you were very laid back. So I think if you said, this is a woman that I'm in love with and I want to spend the rest of my life with her, she's got to be pretty fantastic and pretty laid back. Yeah, she's she doesn't get upset about... Uh, I, I, we've, I don't think we've ever had a fight in no? three years. By the way, is my shirt okay here because... Shirt looks great. Well, I like uh, the color. Button, see, I've had this problem with button downs lately. Where right, is Duji giving a hard time out showing well, I'm your not hair? Sure, no, well, I'm not sure if it's, it's, it's. Sometimes I feel like it's too high, and then sometimes it's too low, and I feel like I'm, you know, some Italian dude from the '70s or something. So, <laughs> well, I'm, are I'm you really, wearing any gold chains? No, but I mean, I do have a little bit of chest hair showing. What it's been were an you, ongoing problem. What that. were you doing before you were showing your chest hair, wearing like an undershirt or something? I, I would, and then it, it got to be 100 degrees in Cleveland, so I got rid of the t-shirt underneath the shirt. What about, did you used to shave your chest hair? Uh, I would clipper it, yes, yes. In fact, I still do a little bit, you know. Do you have a lot of chest hair? I don't think you have a lot I know. of chest hair. Well, I have, a, I have a fair amount of chest hair, which is weird because I'm completely bald in my head. I have no hair. <laughs> yeah, it's like, weird, I have right? Hair all went to your chest. In all the wrong places. <laughs> you were mentioning earlier that you didn't have a dad growing up. Well, you're going to be getting married. Are you thinking, like, do you want to have children? Do you think you'll be a good dad? Uh, you know, I actually love kids. I want to have kids. I don't know if Brittany, my fiance slash girlfriend, whatever, um, I... Uh, she's not really as hip on having kids as I am. Uh, she's younger sh than I am. She's How old is she? 28. Um, but part of the issue is, uh, and maybe once you just have it, maybe you can't plan for it. You just have to have a kid, and then you're in it. You know, well, you, there's no, you can't get out of it at that point. But planning to have a child is pretty daunting because I'm like, God, I love to sleep. And I love to have free time and do whatever I want. And that all goes out the window when you have kids. If you could do this job for the rest of your life, will you? Or do you feel like at some point you want to be like a Jerry Seinfeld who says, I'm going to just go out on top? I, th I don't know about mornings. I, I mean, this is, it, it does take a toll on you. Um, and I've noticed that more in the past probably two or three years. Um, you know, waking up, I've never been a morning person, believe it or not, so uh, I, I get usually about two and a half hours of sleep at night, and then on the weekends, I just sleep all weekend, so I don't know, a few more years, I think I can do mornings, and then maybe, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do afternoons or something, maybe I'll get into uh, web, webisodes or something where I interview people in Rolls Royces. Well, that's an idea. We could end up doing something like that together. How's the we pay? We could go in on it together. Good. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm driving a Rolls Royce. I, right. it's, it's not in my name. Do you have to take it back <laughs> later? Or? No, unfortunately, uh, I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's cool because you just drive a bunch of different types of cars. I never thought I'd be driving a Rolls Royce. I didn't oh, think I'd ever is, be in one. Yeah, this is sweet. I like this.
If you rear-ended someone, though, do you know how many more views you would get? Like, if you just crashed into something right now, it may actually be worth it. They could probably, it's a write-off.